Hi, I'm Vincenzo Coya, and welcome to STAT545, the video series designed to help you write a clean and modern data analysis. We've been using tibbles an awful lot in this course, and maybe we've been taking for granted the fact that tibbles actually contain probably the most fundamental data structure in R ever, which are vectors. Well, there are three things that you really ought to know about vectors if you're going to be deliberate with your code and if you're going to have any success with troubleshooting your code. All the while in this episode, we'll be distinguishing between the two types of vectors, namely lists and atomic vectors. By the way, when people talk about atomic vectors, usually they just say vectors, so I'll be doing that as well in this episode. The first thing that you absolutely need to know about vectors and lists in R is that vectors are strict but lightweight, and lists are flexible but bulky. So let's break this down. Vectors are strict because they can only handle the same type of object repeated over and over again, and they can't even take all that many objects in the first place. Whereas lists are flexible because they can take any type of object at all, and they don't even have to be the same type of object within the same list. For example, I can make a list containing the number five and the word hello. But a vector, on the other hand, would need to either contain all numbers or all text, but not both. By the way, we use C to make a vector. And instead of giving us an error when we tried to make this vector, R decided to turn five into text because it couldn't turn hello into a number. Lists can hold all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Anything, really. Like this time series object and the sum function. But these are way too exotic for vectors. Just try to make a vector with these, and R will try and turn it into a list. And in this case, fails miserably. So just what can a vector hold? Pretty much just numbers, text, and logicals. There are a few more options, but these three will get you pretty far in a data analysis. So why bother with vectors anyway if we could just use lists for everything? Well, the problem is that lists are just bulky. They actually have to compartmentalize every component because every component could be anything at all, versus a vector doesn't have that outer shell around every component. We'll see this in more detail next. The second thing that you absolutely need to know about vectors and lists in R is that they can be subset according to their index name, or logical statement. First of all, the fundamental way in which we subset vectors and lists in R is using the square bracket. And we can either use a single set of square brackets or a double set of square bra brackets. Take the islands vector, for example, which contains the area of the largest landmasses in the world. This is actually a numeric vector where each entry is actually named. I can use either a single or double square bracket to extract the second island. The only difference here is that the single square brackets keeps the name, whereas the double square bracket doesn't. What happens if I turn this vector of islands into a list? First of all, notice that this list is also named. Using a single square bracket gives me the second entry encapsulated by a list structure, whereas the double brackets gives me just the contents of the second entry, having shed the list structure. So if a list is like a series of boxes, then using a single square bracket will give us the requested box, but using double square bracket will give us the contents of the requested box. Whereas vectors, on the other hand, don't really have much of a difference between using a single or a double set of square brackets for subsetting. And that's because, because vectors are so strict as to what they are allowed to hold, for example, only single individual numbers, we don't need to put a box around each component in order to tell the components apart, like a list does. So if we ask for the second component of a vector, we're simply going to get the second component of the vector. There's nothing else to it. This is why lists are bulky and vectors are more lightweight. You can also subset more than one entry, say islands 2, 4, and 5. For a list, this only works when a single square bracket is involved. Remember, double square brackets try and strip away the list structure 
but we need to keep the list structure in order to bind these three islands together. Okay, so we've seen subsetting using an index, but what about subsetting by using a name or by a logical statement? Just specify the names of the entries we'd like to extract. Although this time, even double square brackets with vectors is not allowed. Same goes with lists. The double square brackets still can't strip the list structure. Because there's more than one component, each component still needs to be compartmentalized. To subset using logicals, just specify the logical statement that you want to subset by. For example, all islands greater than 100. The reason this works is that the operation inside of the square brackets here evaluates to a logical vector. It's still a named logical vector, but what's happening is that all entries that correspond to false are thrown away in the subset. The third thing that you absolutely must know is that many calculations in R are vectorized. So a calculation is vectorized if it just does the same thing on each component of the vector or list. For example, here are the vectors of GDP per capita and population from the Gapminder dataset. Let's use the head function to take a look at the first six entries. If we want to get the country's total GDP, we only need to multiply GDP per capita with the population. This is vectorized because the first entry of the GDP vector is the product of the first entry of the GDP per cap vector and the first entry of the population vector. And likewise, the second entry of the GDP vector is the product of the second entries of the GDP per capita and population vectors. By the way, vectorization is less common with lists than it is with vectors because with lists, you just never know what's going to be inside each component. But what if the vectors don't match? For example, I've taken only Canada's populations at different times, taken from the same Gapminder data, and there are far fewer entries compared with the GDP per capita vector taken from all entries. If we try multiplying Canada's records of population with the whole world's records of GDP per capita, R silently recycles, or repeats, the smaller vector until it reaches the same size as the bigger vector. This is a good thing if we're multiplying by a single number, but otherwise, recycling is best to avoid, and just know that this is a common source of errors. For example, here I took a vector of the countries corresponding to the GDP per capita entries. Does this code down below subset the GDP per capita vector for countries Canada and Japan? No, because the right-hand side is recycled until its length matches the left-hand side. But luckily, the in operator doesn't vectorize the right-hand side. It compares each component of the left-hand side, each country, to the entire collection of entries on the right-hand side to check whether or not the country belongs to this set. Aside from these vectorized operations, many of the functions that you use in love with R are already vectorized for you. Just check the documentation to be sure, because not all of them are. Well, those are the three most important things that you absolutely need to know about vectors and lists in R. First one being that vectors are strict as to what they can contain, but are lightweight because of it, whereas lists are flexible as to what they can contain, but are bulky because of it. And second of all, lists and vectors can be subset by index, name, or logical statement. And third, many calculations in R are vectorized. Well, that's it for part A of this video series. I hope you enjoyed it and found it really useful. But don't worry, because part B is coming up right away starting next week. So I'll see you then. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I really want to help you write a clean and modern data analysis. And subscribing is really the best way for you to keep up to date with these videos. See you next time.